Hello, I'm Dr. Brant Gibson, and today we're going to talk about another form of peripheral neuropathy that you need to learn how to get control of. As you get control of the nerve damage that's causing this type of peripheral neuropathy, you can actually improve the peripheral neuropathy as well. It, this is a toxic neuropathy, and any substance that can cause injury or damage or even is poisonous to the nerve cells will cause a peripheral neuropathy or a toxic type peripheral neuropathy. Common substances that we found that can cause toxic neuropathy, medications. There are multiple medications that can cause peripheral neuropathy. The medication can be anything from blood pressure medication to cholesterol medications. Uh, there are even certain types of neuropathy medications that cause or can cause a nerve damage as well. There is a pretty significant list that we actually go through that we say, okay, here's all the list of the medications that you look through and say, okay, am I taking any of these? Because they can cause a toxic peripheral neuropathy. Cancer treatments, especially chemotherapy and radiation, can both cause damage to the nerves. Uh, the heavy metals like arsenic, lead, mercury, etc., can cause damage to the peripheral, peripheral nerves. Common f reasons that you may get a toxic neuropathy from these types of substances is maybe you're working with certain chemicals that will cause your body to receive these. Maybe you're working as a farm worker. Maybe you're working in certain types of factories that expose you to these substances. And at the right levels, they will cause a toxic damage to your nerves. Um, alcohol. Alcoholics are commonly suffering with peripheral neuropathy. So it depends on the amount of alcohol, but alcohol is toxic to nerves at a certain level. Tobacco, same thing, can cause damage to certain peripheral nerves. Um, both directly and sometimes indirectly by how it affects the circulation. The recreational drugs, most the medica most the recreational type drugs that cause damage to other areas of the body will si similarly cause a peripheral neuropathy by damaging the nerves in the peripheral nerves. Anything that is damaged, anything that is poisonous will cause this type of problem. So as you're determining if you have a toxic neuropathy, there's really two areas that you need to work to manage the peripheral neuropathy. One is you need to remove the toxin, and number two, you need to repair the damage of the nerve. So removing the toxin. Let me give you an example. It's not completely related, but it'll actually help you understand a little bit more. Uh, for a while, we had a goldfish in our house, and the idea with the goldfish is they typically don't live very long if they're not taken care of well. The best thing to do is you're regularly changing out the water. Why are you changing out the water? You're removing all the toxins that are produced by the fish into the water. You're actually cleaning that out and giving them fresh water that allows them to live longer. Same type of thing. If your nerve was like that fish and it's sitting in a substance that's continuing getting toxins in there, over time, your nerve is going to die. It's going to be damaged in such a way that it starts to die. So you need to remove the toxins first and foremost. Examples of how would you remove the toxins? Some common example, medications, there's certain medications that you're taking and it's a toxic medication for your nerves. A lot of times you can work with your doctor and actually change medications. So instead of using this blood pressure medication, maybe use this blood pressure medication that is not toxic to the nerves. Um, and as you can remove those toxins over a period of time, it allows the nerve to at least the damage to stop, but sometimes will even allow the body to start to repair that nerve if you're not continuing to damage the nerve in the process. But the other part of that, of course, is repairing the nerve. And there are multiple things you can do to repair a nerve. Sometimes it's as simple as nutrition. Sometimes it's a blood flow problem where you can actually adjust the blood flow and improve it. Sometimes it's a form of uh, electrical stimulation or running currents through the nerves so the nerve themselves start to repair. Uh, a lot of times vitamins are involved where you're actually saying, okay, we're not taking vitamins for a deficiency or dependency. We're taking vitamins because of a toxicity. And as we use those vitamins for the toxicity, it allows us to improve the way those nerves are functioning. But because of the complexity of treating a toxic type neuropathy, when you want to control the nerve damage, you need to remove the toxins, then you need to work on repairing the nerve. It's usually not quite as quick as some of the other treatments that we find in certain types of peripheral neuropathy. So it's going to be a little bit slower process, but if you know what the toxins are, 
and you're able to remove them, then you say, okay, what types of damage does this particular toxin cause? You'll know what types of treatments can help. So it's very important that you get a diagnosis of what's causing your toxic neuropathy so that you can find a solution. So the second thing, so if you remember yesterday we talked about uh, orthomolecular medicine, which is the use of vitamins, nutrients, and so forth to treat a deficiency or dependency type neuropathy. Um, today, it was toxic neuropathy. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about a compression neuropathy, which is also a common type of neuropathy that can be treated and helped if you evaluate the system in such a way that you know where the compression is coming from. This is Dr. Grant Gibson, and this is your